Good evening, Mario and Francisco. Thank you for being on time. I hope that you have had a good day and it's nice to hear you. Well, to see you again, uh, Francisco, I see that you're going to be just listening. Veo que apuesto que va a estar nada más como oyente. And, uh, well, I just have the two of you, but we have to start the class right now. So, yesterday we were um, discussing about workplace hazards, and we were about to read uh, this article about the top 10 top workplace hazards and how to prevent them. Uh, because of time, we couldn't do it in uh, breakout rooms, but I'm sharing the screen for you. And we're going to start from here. Among the 10 most common workplace hazards, we have a fall from work at hay or and fell objects. So that's the number one. Let me let me read that for you. So I see that the ones that are connected are just going to be as listeners. Falls from work and at height on falling objects. Falls from heights are among the most common and serious workplace injuries. Can you believe that? <laughs> Those working in construction and maintenance of roof and raised space is more risk. Falling objects and tools are another serious risk in a similar vein, and both can cause serious life changing injuries. Aymara's reporting is just to be listening. Okay. Thank you so much for letting me know. And well, we're not going to go deeper on prevention because we, we just want to know the risk of, of the workplace. Uh, number two is machinery malfunction. The potential injury from improper use of work equipment as well as ever present possibility of machinery malfunction can be serious and even life threatening. Electrical, we have shocks from light wires and malfunctioning equipment can happen with no warning and can easily be fatal. The urgency and danger of electrical hazards underline the importance of taking the appropriate preventive measure. The number four, we have fire. Poorly maintained electrical equipment can lead to fire, which can cause burns at varying degrees and even death. Fire is a hazard that can happen in almost any workplace, so fire extinguishers should be accessible and regularly maintained at all times. And number five, we have confined spaces. Working in enclosed spaces can be hot and uncomfortable and can lead to oxygen deprivation. Furthermore, working with materials that emit fumes can be fatal in a space that don't have the correct ventilation. As number six, we have a physical. This includes slips, trips, cuts and other physical injuries from uneven surfaces and clutter work environments. These are the most common work-related hazards and usually the least dangerous. Nevertheless, the possibility for more serious injuries is even present and puts older and disabled members of our team at great risk. As number seven, we have ergonomic. The springs, body fatigue, and work can accumulate over time due to repetitive tasks and upward postures. This can result in chronic conditions 
that require physical therapy to correct. They can also have a drastic adverse effect on employee morale as those who suffer from these ailments will associate work with the pain. As number eight, we have chemical. Exposed and poorly managed industrial chemicals like cleaning products, solvents, carbon monoxide, gasoline, and more can lead to skin irritation, burn, or injuries, and blindness. As number nine, we have biological. The biological risk can originate from agents that transmit illnesses to humans, such as insect bites, bodily fluids, bacteria, and viruses. This should be a major concern of safety managers currently due to the ongoing pandemic. And as number 10, noise. Hearing damage or loss can occur from progressive and ongoing exposure to loud noises, such as from heavy machinery or other loud sounds. And this is what we had in this, um, in the material that you were supposed to read yesterday in order to complete the chart that we were um, and this cousin is the one that I'm showing here. So I'd like to know if you finished this chart or if, did you work on it? Nobody? Okay, probably nobody did. Um, so I uh, give you mm -hmm. I give you some minutes for you to list at least one in each category. Yesterday, I provided you with one example, and now I have read the material for you, so you can um complete this office well hazards and risks as office hazard hazardous substances, electricity, and let me see the last one. Sleep, trips, and fall risk. I give it time for you to list at least one for each category.
Have you finished writing your examples of workplace hazards? No, yet, teacher. I just have two examples of the office hazard. Okay. I'll give you five minutes and then we're going to share what you have. Thank you, Matt. Okay. Thank you.
Okay, let us share what you have, a uh, volunteer. Volunteer to share your examples. Yes, Santos Cristina. Okay. Hoy sí. Teacher. Yes. Um, bueno, son unas dos porque me conecté un poquito tarde. Sí. Este, That's okay. <laughs> um, peligro en la oficina. Bueno, no puse solo uno, yo sé que hay varios, vea, pero. Eh, fall is the floor is weak. No sé si está bien así. What floor? Yes. Uh -huh. uh -huh. That would be in sleep and trip. Sería en esta de acá. Ok, but yes. Thank you so much, Cristina. Y hazard and rich um, everywhere, everywhere. Podría ser. Uh, yes, hazard and risk everywhere. <laughs> Any example? Um, electricity, I find the hazards, tour everything, every, <coughs> perdón, que dejan un poquito manita la garganta, tour everything of before leaving home. Mm -hmm. Okay, so you have two, two, two examples. Excellent, yeah. Cristina, thank you so much for your participation. And Thank I you. hope that you get better. <laughs> Drink hot tea. Any other volunteer? I have teacher one example of hazard substances. Ah, okay. What is it? One example is, is be put uh, without levels. Uh -huh. liquids uh, or dangerous substances without label. Mm, yeah. It's really dangerous. Yes, they have to be properly labeled and aware of the reach of any employee. Uh -huh. Very good. Nice example. Do you have any other? Uh, no, to no more. Yeah. That's okay. Thank you so much for sharing, Matias. Any other volunteer? Okay, so we're going to move to this um, this conversation on page 35. And uh, the objective is to provide to provide safety measures uh, to control risk at the production plant. And as you can see, we have a couple of uh, phrases in bold. Um, that means that is the grammar focus for us. Um, we're going to discuss it later. In the meantime, we're going to practice this conversation between um, Joel and Diego. Let's see. Okay, look at the picture. Ah, I see, uh, well, three workers. And they are walking, and one of them doesn't have a helmet. Hmm. That's probably the conversation about the safety measures or risk control. Okay. Let's start. I'm going to read for you, and then you tell me if you have any question. Gee, have my safety goggles have been stolen? I don't see them anywhere. Your goggles have been taken away. There are new safety measures in the plan. You gotta be kidding. What are those measures about? You are required to wear ear protection, gloves, reflective vest, protection belt, helmet, jacket, rubber boots, earplugs, 
store tools in proper location. So my girls and the other tools I left around here have been taken away. Yes, the new safety plan has been designed to prohibit scattered tools outside the tool room. Okay, do we have questions? Teacher. Mm -hmm. um, scatter, scatter, scatter. Mm -hmm. De la última de Diego. ¿Cómo se pronuncia? Scatter. Scattered. 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 Sin pronunciar la TV. Scattered. Mm -hmm. okay. Scattered. Mm -hmm. Scattered. Es como una R y el sonido final de scattered. Taken away, taken away. And tomadas y puestas lejos, taken away. Llevadas, se las llevaron. Ok. Mm -hmm. Any other question? Teacher, how can I pronounce uh, prohibit? Prohibit mm -hmm. or? Prohibit. Mm -hmm. Prohibit. Ah, yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. Any other question? This topic is present perfect teacher. Passive voice with present perfect. Por eso que quizás le suena como present perfect. Sí, es present perfect en voz pasiva. No es tan difícil, ya van a ver. Por eso les, les mandé una guía aparte que es una worksheet, es una hoja de trabajo. Eh, por este tema, porque lo vamos a estar practicando, qué es la voz pasiva, para qué sirve. Um, en este caso, como ven, el pregunta, la primera pregunta, donde dice, G, have my safety Google been stolen? I don't see them anywhere. Y la expresión G es como decir, Jesús, Dios mío, es solo una expresión que no tiene un significado específico, es solo cuando es como para mostrar asombro como cuando decimos ¡Eh, Dios o oh, solo uh -huh. entonces y luego dice have my safety Google's been stolen entonces ven por ahí que um, el, eh, eh, hay, hay algo por ahí que no es lo que comúnmente usamos verdad que es la voz activa en el que el, uh, se enfo está enfocada en el sujeto en este caso está enfocada en la acción han sido robados por eso está ahí como eh, en negrito y es lo que vamos a estar practicando eh, luego de contestar estas preguntas ven, viene how to use the passive voice with the present perfect tense vamos a ver la voz pasiva en tiempo presente perfecto también existe la voz pasiva en presente simple, pasado simple y la del present perfect, que es la que nos, nos da el material. De hecho, la voz pasiva en presente simple se mira en el básico 1. No sé si la vieron los que están desde el básico 1, pero sí, la pasiva en presente simple se mira en el básico, eh, no, perdón, en el básico 3. Uh -huh. Básico 3. Así que hoy vamos por la del present perfect tense. Y vamos a, a ir como paso a paso hasta llegar a la guía. Donde explica un poco más en qué consiste. Cuando usarla. 
y eh, ejercicios. Any other question about the conversation? Any doubts? Yeah, okay, so if there are no more questions, I'm going to create the uh, breakout rooms for the people who wants to practice this conversation. Uh, you're more than welcome. So, voy a dejar de compartir y recuerden que esta conversación la tienen en, en la página 35, page 35 of your material. Um, I've created breakout rooms and I'll, I'll be checking. Voy a estar chequeando para los que quieran practicar porque pues la mayoría está como oyentes nada más. Entonces no tengo idea de quiénes pueden o no participar. Así es que pues tal vez voluntariamente se unan a un breakout room y este desde ahí practican y, y voy a estar ahí para ayudarles. I don't see them anywhere. <laughs> Your Googles. Your Googles have been taken away. <laughs> there are new safety measures and plan. Go to the building. What are those measures about? You are required to wear ear protection gloves. Lo que podría hacer, Mauricio, es que si usted o dígale al señor que cuánto tiempo espera, ¿verdad? Para que no pague el recargo. Lo que pasa es que como hay que pagarle horas extras a la gente que se quede haciéndolo fuera de la. Okay, continue. You are required to wear ear protection gloves, reflective pants, protection belt, helmet, jacket, rubber boots, ear plugs, store tools in proper location. So my tools and the other tools I left around can have been taken away. <clears throat> yes. The new safety plan has been designed to prohibit scattered, scattered tools outside the tool room. 
Now I'm going to jog. Okay. G. Help my safety gloves. Help my safety go <clears throat> goggles. How my safety gloves being stole? I don't see them anywhere. The goggles have been taken away. There are no safety to be sure in the plant. You got to be kidding. What are those me sure about? You are required to wear our air protection, gloves, reflection vest, protection belt, helmet, jacket, cover boots, ear plugs, store stores in proper location. <clears throat> so my goggles and the other tools I left around here have been taken away? Yes, the new safety black has been decided to private card tools outside the tool room. <coughs> okay, very good. Sorry. Who's next? Who wants to participate? ¿Quién más quiere practicar la conversación, compañeros? You did a very good job, Miguel and Abigail. Um, no sé si los demás solo están como oyentes, pero eh, lo hicieron muy bien. Eh, si los demás no pueden participar, ustedes lo pueden hacer nuevamente, tratando de, de hacerlo un poco más, tal vez fluido, repetir un poco más. Porque si lo hicieron bien, la pronunciación está bien. Y lo único es quizá darle más fluidez para que suene natural. Pero lo hicieron súper bien. Ok, thank you, teacher. Okay, thank you, teacher. <coughs> okay, I enjoy it. Okay. G, how my safety goggles being stolen? I don't see them anywhere. Your Google have been taken away. There are new safety measures in the plan. Mm -hmm. You go to mm -hmm. in the mm -hmm. warehouse mission about? You are required to wear hair protection, gloves, <clears throat> reflective bands, protection belt, helmet, jacket, rubber boots, hair, hair plugs, store tools in proper location. So my tools in the other stool. I left around here. Have been taken away? <laughs> yes. The new safety plan has been designed to prohibit prohibit scarred tool outside the outside the tool room. Okay, okay. I'm going to start. Gee, how much safety goggles being installed? I don't see them anywhere. Two goggles have been taken away. There are no there are new safety measures in the plant. You've got to be <clears throat> kidding. What are those measures about? You are ready to wear air protection, gloves, reflection vest, protection vest, helmet, jacket, cover pots, air <coughs> improves, store tools, and prepare location. So my Googles and the other tool I left around have been taken away. Yes, the new safety plan has been designed to prohibit external tools outside the tool room. <clears throat> okay, very good. Yeah, sounds much more better. Sana mucho mejor. I know that Abigail, uh, you are not very, very well. Uh, but you're doing your best effort and it is really appreciated. Thank you so much for your participation. 
Eh, voy a cerrar el, el, el room porque no escuché que nadie más quisiera practicar. ¿O hay alguien más eh, disponible ahorita? Yo, teacher, lo que pasa es que me cayó una llamada aquí al celular de, de, una, ah, de una empresa. Entonces, ni modo, tuve que suspender, pero aquí estoy yo. Ok, Cristina. Eh, Víctor y Cristina. Ok, Víctor y Cristina. Mm, si quiere, Víctor, empiezo yo. No sé qué dice usted. Ok. Thank you. Um, give have my safety Google 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 I don't sit in anywhere. Anywhere. Anywhere, okay. Your goggles have been taken away. There are new safety measures in the plant. Measures? Measures. Measures. Mm -hmm. you, be, you, you, you better be, be. You gotta be kidding. You better, you better go to be kidding. You gotta. Tiene que unirlo. You gotta be kidding. You gotta be kidding. Okay. Excelente. You gotta be kidding. You gotta be kidding. What are it tos or tos? Tos. What are those? What are it tos? Measures about. Measures about. Measures about. Okay. You are required to wear air protection, globe, reflective vest. Protection belt, helmet, jacket, rubber boot, air plugs, storage tools, and proper location. So my Google and the other tools I list around her have been taken away. Yes, the new safety plan has been designed to prohibit to prohibit scattered prohibit mm -hmm. prohibit prohibit prohibit, prohibit. Uh -huh, excellent to prohibit scattered tools outside the tool room okay hoy si gusta empiece usted okay g have my safety goggles being stolen i don't see them anywhere there Google, Google, <laughs> your Google has been taken away. There are new safety measures in the plan. You've got, you've got to be kidding. What are those measures about? You are required to wear air protection, gloves, reflective vest, Protection belt, helmet, jacket, rubber boots, air blocks, storage tools in proper location. So my goggles and the other tools I left around here have been taken away. Yes, the new safety plan. Plan or plan, teacher? Plan, I see. Plan. plan. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yes, the new safety plan, plan has been designed for pro, prohibit, dijo usted, ¿verdad? prohibit. Yes, excelente. Prohibit scar, scar tools outside the tool room. Excellent. You Thank see, you. the second time was better. La segunda Thank vez you. fue mucho que mejor. Así que pues, yes, eso es siempre práctica y entre más mejor. Thank you so much, Victor Thank and you. Cristina. Gracias. No, Ok, thank you for your participation. Eh, no sé si alguien más quiere practicar o cerramos el boom. Ha estado un Mario, pero él siempre participa, quizás no, quizás había levantado. Ah, ahí está don Mario. Ok. Carlos, Carlos, no sé si está, está disponible, don Carlos Humberto. O Javier, no sé. Okay. Sí, 
mira, allá a lo lejitos, pero se le oye. Ah, se le oye mejor. Don Carlos Estrada, ¿eh? Sí, se escucha. Dele, don Carlos. Y, 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 y Mario. Don Mario. Entonces, ¿quién va a ser quién? Falciar. Ah, yo. Entonces, voy a ser Diego, yo. Yes. Ok. G, have my safety Google been stolen? I don't see them anywhere. Your Google have been taken away. There are new safety measures in the plan. Measures? Measures, okay. You be got, you be got to be kidding. You What gotta are, be. Uh -huh. you, you gotta you be, gotta be kidding. You gotta, you gotta be kidding. What are those measures? I should about you are required to wear air protection gloves, reflective vest, protection belt, helmet, jacket, rubber boots, ear plug, store tools in proper location. So, my googles and the other tools I left around here have, have been taken away. Yes, the new, the new safety plan. Has been designed to prohibit scattered tools outside the tool room. Okay, I am here to stay. Okay. G, have my safety tools been stolen? I don't see them anywhere. The Googles have been take, taken away. There are a new safety measures in the plant. You got to be seeing uh, what are those issues about. You are required to wear ear protection, gloves, reflective beds, protection belt, helmet, jacket, rubber, bo rubber boots, ear plugs, store tools in proper location. So my goggles and other tools are left around have been taken away. Yes, the new safety plan has been designed to prohibit the skyterer tools outside the tools room. Great, excellent. Thank you so much, Mario and Carlos, for your participation. You did an awesome job. Como pudieron ver ya en la segunda parte, ya no les corregí nada. Porque las correcciones ustedes las aplicaron, las que hice en la primera vez que uh, hicieron el role play. Así que, good for you. Excellent. Would anybody else would like to participate? Or do we close the room? Ah, dormí, falta, pero no sé si estará disponible para que practique con uno de nosotros. Dormí, Castillo. Pero, bueno, ahí aparece el nombre, pero no sé. Sí, pero no nos sí, responde. Sí, quizás uh -huh. no está disponible. Uh -huh. Pues, sí, eh, okay. pero si nos falta tiempo, teacher, seguimos practicando. Uh -huh. Le damos otra ronda ahí. Sure. ¿Alguien más que quiera hacer otra práctica? Con don Marito, no sé qué dice. O don Víctor. O don Matbiel. Or me. Ok. Ok, por mí. Ok. Si quiere enviarse usted, más bien. Ok. G, how my safety Google's being stored? I don't see them anywhere. Uh, your Google's have, have, have been taken away. There, I heard, perdón, or oh, there is, there is. There is. There is. There, there. La T se veía como que era there are there are new safety make sure in the plan you've got to be kidding what are those means you're about you are required to wear air protection blood reflective vest protection belt helmet jacket rubber books air flux store stores in proper location Uh -huh. Ear plugs. Ear plugs. Ear plugs. Okay. Mm -hmm. 
these blocks. Okay, gracias. So my Google's, uh, my goals and the other tools I left around have been taken away. Yes, the new safety plan has been designed to prohibit scattered tools outside the toll room. Voy a empezar o vea más bien. Yes, yes, please. Okay. Do you have my safety Google being stolen? I don't see them anywhere. Your Googles have been taken away. There are new safety measures on the plan. You, you, go, you got to be kidding. What are those measures about? Measure you are required about. to mm -hmm. wear air protection, gloves, reflective vest, protection belt, helmet, jacket, rubber boots, ear plugs, store tool in the proper location. So my Google and the other tools in I left it left around here has been taken away. Yes, the new safety plan has been designed to prohibit scarred tools outside this tool room. Okay, thank you. No sé ya si alguien más quiere practicar. Teacher, just I have a question. Mm -hmm. The phrase uh, around here means uh, como dejar los tirados. El scattered eh, es, um, déjeme ver, around here, ¿a dónde está? Joel. Eh, Joel. La última frase de Joel. Ok, so my Googles and other tools I left around here, uh -huh, around here es alrededor de aquí. Ajá, around, en los alrededores. Aquí en los alrededores. Ajá, entonces mis Googles y otras herramientas que yo dejé aquí en los alrededores, ¿las han sido llevadas? Y le dice que sí, yes. Eh, las nuevo, el nuevo plan de seguridad ha sido diseñado para prohibir herramientas dispersas afuera del eh, salón de herramientas. <ríe> Me cuesta estar traduciendo. La bodega. Ajá, te la, ajá. Entonces, las, eh, eh, si dice las que dejé aquí en los alrededores, es around here. Y la scatter tool es, eh, el, el, el verbo scatter es dispersos. Ah, okay. Tools, herramientas dispersas. Entonces, por eso es que no los tiene, porque se las han llevado, ya que está prohibido dejar herramientas dispersas afuera del cuarto de herramientas. Uh -huh. Ok, thank you so much, teacher. Uh -huh. ¿Alguien más? ¿Otra pregunta? ¿O nos vemos en la sesión principal para responder las preguntas de la conversación? Ok. Está bien, teacher. That's sí. Okay. Uh -huh. Thank you so much for your participation in the breakout room. Now that we have a practice, the conversation, we're going to continue um, with the next exercise. And this is related to the conversation that we just practiced in the breakout room. Um, so you might remember, and if you don't, you can go back to the conversation and check. At uh, least number one, I remember. <laughs> what item is Joel looking for? What items is Joel looking for? He's looking for his Google. Number two, what is the new safety measure about? 
And number three, in your opinion, why should tools not be scattered in the production plant? I'll give you time for you to answer that question. They are on page 35, as well as the conversation. If you want to work on your um, PDF and the PDF that you download from the platform is on page 35.
finished. Yes, anybody would like to share the answer for number two? What is the new safety measure about? Sure. Mm -hmm. The new safety measure is to prohibit scarred, scarred tooth outside the tool room. Excellent, that is correct. And in your opinion, why should tools not be scattered in the production plant? Because scattered tools could be, uh, sorry, could, uh, could cause accidents. Excellent, that's the reason. Thank you so much for your participation, Matthew. So, um, we're going to continue with the passive voice. In this case, we have this grammar busk. Uh, let's just look at the examples in the box and then complete the exercises below. Um, the passive boy is used when the emphasis of the sentence is on the action and not on the subject. You see the sentence number one, your Googles have been taken away in contrast to they have taken your Googles away. In sentence one, the person who took away the Googles is not important. It is not mentioned. <laughs> Ni siquiera la mencionamos la persona en la oración número uno. No es importante. Eh, lo que es importante, como ven en la dos, es eh, el hecho de que han sido eh, tomados eh, y es el hecho que es en, enfatizado. Las oraciones con passive voice llevan un object, el have or has been, the birth in past participle form. We have, have my safety goals been stolen in contrast to have they stolen my safety Googles? This question focuses on the safety Googles, not in the person who stole them. Entonces, es, um, y aquí tenemos la passive voice in questions, tenemos la fórmula. Primero va a ir el auxiliar have o has, dependiendo del, del tipo del sujeto o persona. Luego un object, el Eh, tenemos been, tenemos que llevar siempre eh, been y luego el verbo principal en pasado participio. And we have this raccoon here. It has been done. Ha sido hecho. You know, it's talking about <laughs> something like um, a misuse, raccoon. <laughs> and this is one example uh, of passive voice in this meme. And then we have an exercise here. But uh, before going to this exercise, um, we're going to check attendance. So I'm going to stop sharing for a couple of minutes and I'm going to proceed to check our attendance for tonight. Mm. Abigail Elizabeth Flores. Abigail Elizabeth Flores. Abigail Mejía. Carlos Alberto Castro. Thank you, Abigail. Thank you. Present, okay. Miss. Thank you so much. Carlos Emilio Cotto. Present teacher. Thank you. Carlos Humberto Estrada. Present teacher. Thank you. Cecilia Noemi. Present teacher. Thank you. Eh, Francisco, ya vi que escribió en el chat. Thank you so much. Eh, Gerson Alexis.
Herson Alexis. Gertrudis Aymara. Hazel Vanessa. Hazel Vanessa. Julissa Yamine. Carla Ivania. Present teacher. Thank you. Luis Javier. Present. Thank you. Magdiel Esaú. Present teacher. Thank you. Marilyn Alejandra. Marilyn Alejandra. Samuel Antonio. Okay, thank you. Santos Cristina. Present teacher. Thank you. Um, Victor Bonilla. Present teacher. Thank you. Okay, we can continue now the sharing screen. Um, Okay, uh, here we have this exercise. It is um, to complete the sentences and questions in the passive voice, choosing the appropriate verbs, and then we're going to compare answers. But before going to that, I would like for us to uh, start with the worksheet that I sent uh, via WhatsApp. I think that everybody received it. If you are in the WhatsApp group, you should have this. The passive voice of the present perfect tense. The present perfect tense is one of the most versatile tense in the English language, but it's mostly used to talk about the status of an action. Not just the passive voice of the present perfect tense. Any tense in the passive voice focuses on the object of the verb. When the speaker wants to focus on or what's being acted upon, it's more important than who has done it. We employ the use of the passive boy and write the sentence in it. Imagine being a management student and the teacher gave you and the other students an assignment a week ago. She expects the assignment to be done by March 6th and it's March seven today. She walks into the room, looks at you, and asks questions about the assignment. Has the assignment been done? Notice that she is focusing on the object of the verb. It is obviously that you are the doer here, the receiver. The assignment is what she wants to focus on. And that's why she has made the sentence in the passive voice of the present perfect tense. If she wanted to focus on the doer, she would have said, have you done the assignment? Como pueden ver, esto nos explica el para qué nos sirve la voz pasiva. Y tenemos un ejemplo. La voz pasiva es cuando nos eh, queremos enfocar la atención a la acción no a quien la hizo o quien debió haberla hecho. Eh, 
en el ejemplo que tienen ahí es que la maestra asignó una tarea. La tarea debió haber estado lista para el 6 de marzo y el 7 de marzo ella pregunta, ¿Has the assignment been done? Se está enfocando en la tarea. Obviamente, los, eh, quien debe de hacer la acción son los estudiantes, pero ella no se quiere enfocar en quién hace la acción, sino que en la acción misma. Eh, por eso es, has the assignment been done en voz pasiva. Si fuera activa, en la voz activa es lo, lo normal, nos enfocamos en el sujeto, en el que hace la acción. Entonces, el ejemplo en la voz activa nos dice, have you done the assignment? ¿Han hecho el, 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 la tarea? ¿Han hecho la asignación? Entonces, ahí está enfocada en, en, los, eh, en los hechores, ¿verdad? pero esa es voz pasiva. La activa se enfoca en, en la acción misma. Entonces, aquí tenemos, por eso les puse esta worksheet para que tengan la explicación ahí y hagan como una comparación de cuándo es activa y cuándo es pasiva. Eh, how to form a sentence in the passive voice of the present perfect tense. Vamos a ir primero con oraciones y van a tener las dos estructuras para que comparen. Eh, How to form a sentence. Tenemos la estructura eh, para que entendamos y comprendamos cómo escribir oraciones. Vamos a empezar por oraciones en la voz activa y en la voz pasiva. Active voice, la voz activa es lo que comúnmente usamos. Primero escribimos el sujeto y luego el auxiliar have o has, dependiendo del sujeto, y luego un verbo en pasado participio y luego object. Cuando decimos object es quien recibe la acción o a quien va dirigida. En la voz pasiva es el objeto en sí. Eh, luego have or has, been, tenemos que poner siempre been y luego el pasado participio del verbo principal. Eh, y luego pues el by más el hechor, the doer. Eso es opcional, ¿verdad? A veces. Eh, notice that the object of the verb, aquí, es, aquí viene esta parte, del objeto de, del verbo se vuelve el sujeto en la voz pasiva. Uh, and it is a, what we focus in the passive voice, nos, nos enfocamos en eso, en la acción, en el verbo. El hechor de la acción no es esencial y con frecuencia no es mencionado. Y aquí tenemos un ejemplo. La primera, ahí está, Active Voice. Jimmy has prepared the food. En pasiva sería, the food has been prepared. La comida ha sido preparada. Podemos dejarlo hasta ahí. O podemos mencionar quién la preparó. ¿Por quién fue preparada? By Jimmy. Uh -huh. Si queremos mencionar el hechor, ponemos by y la persona o el pronombre personal o lo que, como lo queramos hacer. Las dos oraciones están en presente perfecto y tienen el mismo significado, pero se enfocan en diferentes cosas. En la voz activa nos enfocamos en el sujeto y en la pasiva en el hecho de que la comida ha sido preparada. Y ahí nos explica un poquito más. The first sentence, which is the active voice, focuses on the doer of the action, meaning the subject, Jimmy. But the second sentence, in which is in the passive voice, focuses on the receiver of the action, the object, in this case, the food. Um, In the active voice, the speaker wanted to focus on who the doer has prepared the food. And in the passive voice, the focus shifted to what the object has been prepared. In the present perfect tense, we talk about completed actions. Just to give an update of the action or to talk about our life experiences. 
in the active voice of the present perfect tense, we talk about what someone has finished. They focus on the doer of the action that has completed an action. But in the passive voice of the present perfect tense, we talk about what's being completed or finished. Who has finished is not important in the passive voice of the present perfect tense. And then, again, no es tan importante, pero sí eh, que por lo menos eh, comprender, ¿verdad? No memorizar los términos como el objeto, el esto, el otro, no. Pero por lo menos que tengan una idea de, eh, de la terminología que se ocupa, que a veces es lo complicado, ¿verdad? Eh, pero pues así lo tenemos en la cajita del Grammar Focus. Más importante es la práctica porque así eh, es como vamos absorbiendo eh, las estructuras, el cómo hacer las cosas y más no estamos cuando estamos hablando, no estamos pensando si estamos haciendo objeto eh, de la oración al sujeto y todo eso, no estamos pensando en eso cuando hablamos. Así es que, pero es importante mencionarlo, sin embargo, aquí tenemos un ejemplo de uh, active to passive voice in the present perfect tense. Y vamos a empezar por la voz activa. It says, I have written an amazing song. Esa misma oración la pasamos a pasiva y nos dice, an amazing song has been written by me es opcional. El quien la escribió, by me. So, vieron el cambio, no es como tan difícil, la verdad. Um, no sé si tienen alguna pregunta. No questions so far? So far, so good, teacher. Okay. Thank you so much for confirming. So, um, Entonces, tenemos ahí el ejemplo hecho. I have written an amazing song. Y luego la pasamos a pasiva. An amazing song has been written by me. Luego tenemos más en voz activa, las cuales ustedes van a pasar a voz pasiva. Les voy a dar tiempo. Pueden trabajar en la worksheet desde su computadora o Pueden hacerlo en su cuaderno si, si se les complica eh, accesar al documento que mandé, que es este mismo que estamos viendo. Lo pueden hacer eh, desde su, eh, us usando su um, cuaderno.
Have you finished? Not yet, teacher. Not yet. Okay, I'll give it time. Thank you.
Any integer. Okay, good. Would you like to share your sentences? Okay. Uh, I'm going to read or can I share? It? Yes, let me check if I, I think I have enabled the function for you to share. Yes, you can share a screen. Can you see? Yes, I can see. It's good. Um, uh huh. Okay, so let's see the first one. John has helped me a lot. Uh huh. Is it okay? Oh, you can say I, I, I have been helped by John. Mm -hmm. Uh huh. I have been here a lot. Y le puedo poner a lot también. Ajá, porque ahí van conjugando. Excelente. El, I have been helped. By John. Uh -huh. At the end could be a lot. Yes, I have no I'll help a lot by John. Muy bien. Uh -huh. A lot by John. Uh -huh. Ahí como ve como en la activa el sujeto era John has bien la pasiva. Ya cambia el, como vamos a hablar ahí, cambiamos el, el auxiliar por have. I have been helped a lot by John. Mm -hmm. Most people have tried alcohol. Alcohol has been tried by most, by most people. Excellent. That is correct. Nobody has done this before. Ajá, uh -huh. el this lo podemos mantener, this. This. Okay. This, ajá, uh -huh. this. This eh, has been. Uh -huh. Y ahí podemos ponerle this hasn't been. Ajá, uh, porque es negativo. Ajá, uh -huh. hasn't been done by nobody before uh -huh. no ha sido hecho por nadie antes uh -huh. excellent uh, My... no. hmm? y ahí no puede ser this has never been done before by anyone también porque el never sería el negativo uh -huh. this has never been done by nobody before excelente Mario si la tiene con never está bien Y si no, pues otra opción es así como la estamos haciendo con, con el has not. Ok. Yeah. Y never, como ya es negativo, no necesitamos poner not or hasn't. Good. Um, my father has helped a lot of people. A lot of people have been helped by my father. Excellent. I have ordered okay. food for everyone in the room. Uh, ahí cambiaríamos food. Uh -huh. Food has been ordered. Uh -huh. Room has and been ordered. Food has been ordered. Uh -huh. Uh Food has been ordered for everyone in the room. Uh, 
en la voz pasiva, eh, el, el objeto pasa a ser lo principal, ¿verdad? Entonces, ahí el objeto es la comida. Entonces, eso es lo que ponemos primero. Um, eh, lo mismo sucedería con la siguiente de Martín. A car. A car, ajá, excelente. Car has been mm -hmm. bought. Bought. Mm -hmm. A car has been bought. Recently by Martin. By Martin. A car has been bought. Recently by Martin. Uh -huh. Excelente. Y la siguiente también está bien. Solamente vamos a cambiar el pronombre. The trailer of the movie has been launched by... Ahí se convertiría a them. Uh, them. Them. Uh -huh. Porque there es un possessive. Ajá, so necesitamos el reflexive. El pronombre reflexivo, them. Ajá. And then, pretty good. Lo hizo bastante bien. Eh, recordamos que es el primer ejercicio en el que vamos a ir puliendo también en el camino y, y pues para hacer el primer ejercicio está súper bien. Ok, thank you so much, teacher. You're welcome. Tenía varias que estaban correctas completamente. <laughs> y las otras partes de talles, but very good. Excellent. Thank you so much for sharing. And then, well, let's see what is next. Eh, ya con eso, pues vamos a las negative sentences. Eh, y ahí tenemos, eh, para hacer la negativa, es similar a lo que recién hicimos acá. Lo único que cambia es que después del have o has, vamos a poner not. Entonces, en la pasiva vamos a poner primero el objeto, luego el auxiliar have o has, dependiendo, luego not. Luego been, luego el pasado participio del verbo y después el by subject or doer. Eso es opcional. Um, and I have here, I haven't made that lesson. Ok, el sujeto aquí es I, ¿verdad? Y el objeto que sería que es la lección, ¿verdad? Entonces pasamos la lección. Primero, que sería el objeto, that lesson hasn't been made by me. Aquí, she hasn't invited me, aquí el objeto soy yo, porque soy quien está recibiendo eh, la acción eh, o quien no recibió la acción en este caso porque no me invitó. Entonces, sería similar a la última de... de que teníamos aquí con el ejemplo que nos dio Matiel y pasó el objeto. Ajá, Mario. No, ahí quedaría, haven't been invited to the party by her. Excelente, Mario. I haven't been invited to the party by her. Excelente. Muy bien. Y vamos a escribirla, solo que no sé qué hice. Necesito el botoncito de undo. Ok. En passive voice nos quedaría así como dice Marco ahorita. Ay, que era anterior, el objeto va a ir primero, en este caso es I. Entonces ya no va a ser hacen sino que haven't. I haven't. Been invited to the party by her. Okay, y así nos quedaría en passive. Y podemos igual hacer la otra aquí juntos, ¿verdad? Para ya mañana eh, hacer el review con el resto de ella, ¿verdad? India 
hasn't lost the match yet. ¿Cuál es el objeto? The match. The match, el juego. Entonces, ¿cómo nos quedaría la oración? Acuérdense que estamos trabajando en negativas. The match hasn't been lost yet by India. Excelente. The match hasn't been lost by India. Uh -huh. Les voy a dar un tiempito para que analicen la siguiente. They haven't finished the song. Y yo creo que podemos terminar esta. The cops haven't caught the folklore yet. Vamos a tratar de hacer esas dos antes de terminar la sección y así cerramos con las negativas y mañana arrancamos con las preguntas. Eso sería the song. Ajá, pasaríamos el objeto al inicio. The song. Ascending. Ascending. Finisher. By them. Excellent, Mario. That is correct. The song hasn't been finished by them. Great. Y en la última, se está haciendo lo mismo. Es el terrorista. El terrorista has been called yet. Ajá, uh -huh. así ah, nos quedaría de burger. Espérenme. <ríe> no me dicen que me equivoqué ahí. Hasn't. The burglar hasn't been caught by the cop yet. Creí que le había cambiado ahí la palabra porque, pues sí, este, no sabe uno cuándo le puede. <ríe> Um, o oh no les mandé esto sí. ah como no si sí se los mandé eh. ya yeah, the burglar ya yeah, si sí lo había cambiado ok so I think that it is um, yes it's time to finish today's section you did an amazing job. Thank you so much for your participation with this exercise, Mario and Magdiel. Um, I'll see you tomorrow for more. I hope that you sleep well and continue practicing. You have the worksheet there. I'll see you tomorrow. See you tomorrow, teacher. Have see a good night. See you, teacher. Bye. Bye. Bye.